It is time for another webtop project. This time we are looking at OS.js. Let's take a look. Howdy everyone and welcome to another episode of Exploring Operating Systems. We are here today with a web top interface that's been in development for quite a while. It seems to be in beta and it's called OS.js and it's basically a web top or web desktop built using JavaScript which is hence the name JS. And this is the site right here. It says OS.js is an open source JavaScript web desktop platform with a window manager, application APIs, GUI toolkit, that is graphical user interface toolkit, file system, abstractions, and much more. So with that being said, we're going to take a look at the desktop. So if you scroll down here, it shows us an idea of what we can do with it. This is the full one web page, and it says, check out the online a demo. And you just notice that little that little startup melody name it says right here. So this is the welcome window, and you already kind of noticed that it's got a little bit of a Mac OS thing going on. There's no dock or anything as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's more of a Linux esque kind of thing than if, if I'm going by UI design, not by um, what it's actually meant to be. I'm going by UI principles, and Linux is more spread about. But in default, it is more kind of Linux esque, maybe um, GNOME esque, if if that's if that's the right analogy for this uh, kind of like desktop design. It's got kind of a Mac OS thing going on. So you've got the nicely colored buttons. You've got I think that's a maximize. Oh, that's a minimize button. That's a maximize button. Yep, and explodes the window, and the close window. So we'll just before we close it, we're going to just take a look at this. So. Welcome to OS.js. This is a public demonstration version of OS.js version 3. Please note this server might run an unstable version and it's got bits and bobs going on. Um, homepage, a GitHub site, um, a chat, a community kind of thing. We'll ignore it for now, we're just going to close this window and it works quite well. Um, Fram. Ace Editor. You can actually choose um, Ace Editor, Textpad, Writer. Um, so Apparently you can actually choose uh, how you get your files made up. We're going to take a look at this fram.txt thing going on. And, oh, okay. <laughs> um, not too sure what, what is going on right here, but it seems interesting. And, oh, look at that. It's kind of laggy, to be fair. Um, it's not just something to do with my computer that seems to be quite laggy right here. You can you see it right here, but a lot of weird symbols going on. Maybe, maybe it's got something to do with the, the uh, platform that I've opened on. We'll try it in Ace Editor to see what's going on right here. Ace Editor seems to be some kind of programming platform. Or some kind of programming language, it doesn't really say. Oh, there's the stuff going on right there. Quite weird that, actually. Um, so that's fram.txt. Um, we will continue on, we'll take a look at some of the items you get built into this little uh, platform or fake OS. Um, Let's not got a real thing. Um, we've got Ace Editor for development, so it's a it's a de development language or development um, uh, program. We've got games and Wolfenstein 3D. So we'll try Tetris out first, because um, who doesn't love a bit of Tetris? Um, so got a little bit of Tetris going on. Just realign the boom. Um, so yeah, it's got a very well functioning uh, version of Tetris going on, which is all well and good, I suppose. Um, can I slot that in right here? And I can maybe push that in here. And boom! So my score is now 3. There we go. So that is Tetris, and we'll take a look at Wolfenstein. Which is quite a lightweight game, it's quite a good game. Oh god. I'm quite bad at this. 
never played Woman's Name properly, so let's just look, look, look at that. An episode of EOS and a bit of uh, gaming at the same time. Hmm. Okay, so that's Wolfenstein. <laughs> not too sure how, how, how to play um, the game, so I've not actually tried it. I've tried um, the, the, the classic uh, Doom before, um, and yeah, I enjoyed playing that, but uh, yeah, I can't play Wolfenstein. Let's just go with that. Draw. A simple drawing program, which is more of, it's more of a pixel editor kind of thing. It's not got a lot of um, options going for it. Pretty sure you could probably customize a color, yes you can. But it's more of a pixel editor, you can um, design icons and such. So rectangle, we'll change the color if we can. There we go. There we go. And boom. So it's got quite, quite a nice thing going for it. It's kind of like MS Paint with a little bit of icon editor and um, pixel editor kind of thing going on. But yeah, that, that's an, oh, that's interesting. So that's graphics, uh, the draw app preview, which um, desktop, what's this? Oh, nice brick. Nice little wallpaper thing going on right there. Um, you'll notice you can't actually access the contents from your own machine. You can only access stuff going on with the virtual machine. It's kind of like a virtual machine in some ways. It's very in in boxed in, if you know what I mean. Oh wow, what's, the what's this? Is this a game thing? Can I zoom out? Well, I can zoom out the entire desktop, so I can change the resolution just by zooming in and out. Okay, so we'll ju just take a look at... Uh, go away, uh, go away. There we go. Uh, there was a an, uh, there was a, a win, uh, there was zoom window in the corner right there, but it was quite annoying because Google seems to implement that it doesn't seem to go away when you click on it or click it to go away. Got a little search system right here going on. I'm not too sure how that works. It's not doesn't want, seem to want to work properly. We've got the, the clock right here, and it's going right down to the to the last second, which is quite interesting. Go back into the menu now. Uh, music player. File open. Um, I'm not too sure if these are copyrighted, so I'm kind of concerned. Um, but st Stained, So Far Away, The Band Perry, If I Die Young, Toby Keith. We'll play a song. Enough of that now. I can't, can't seem to press the play and pause icons, which is quite weird. Um, which is quite bad. I hope, hope I'll not get claimed, but um, we'll, we'll see. Strof JS XMPP client. What the heck is this? What the heck is this? Connection options. What, what is a what is an X, XMPP? Is it some kind of email client? Um. Hmm. How the hell do you close this? There we go. So you've got network. Ah, so it's an email client. Okay. So calculator. Kind of got a bit of a, a Linux thing going on with it. Um, not too bad, it's kind of Linux slash classic Windows-ish going on. Um, you can kind of see the buttons aren't completely aligned with each other. It's quite weird, but um, yeah, you can just scale it down like so. And you can calculate with it, so 56 times 23 equals 1288. I never knew that, so that's good to know. EPUB, which I'm pretty sure is a book reader. Um, EPUB is the extension used for um, especially like publisher documents, like stuff made in Microsoft Publisher, and also EPUB is also a format used for books. So if you if you use a, a product um, other than an Amazon um, Kindle, if you use a more manual based um, e-reader that allows you to actually 
put your own books on it from a different site or a different website externally and kind of then put them on through an SD card or something like that. These are the files you'll probably use alongside maybe like text documents and all sorts. That's the EPUB um, extension, so you can kind of read books with this as well, which is intriguing. We'll see if there's anything to go ahead with. Not, nothing at all. Um, and you can, I, th I think you can also read, this, uh, read PDF co content on um, e-readers as well, which is kind of interesting. We've got P PDF reader right here, fun, fun enough. So we'll go back to Office, HTML Viewer, which of course is for viewing HTML documents, which are literally what websites are built with. HTML code. So nothing really to see right here. Um, PDF reader, so you can read PDF documents, but you have to write a document to turn it into a PDF first. Applic what's this? English German word list. Huh. Cherries baked, aubergine, avocado, jibakin, <laughs> whatever. Um, I butcher the German language before I've done with this. A uh, web ODF. What's what's web ODF? I'm not too sure about that file format. Not too sure about that one. Um, I'll take a look at that later. But we've got the writer, and notice how it's got the LibreOffice um, writer icon. That's kind of interesting. And it's just a simple text editor, which we'll try and toy about with this. So I'm just going to type a random stuff in this as a random 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 text doc you men up document and can you if it's a if, if, if it's not like a notepad because um, a, a notepad if you were to try and make the text bold or slim or whatever it would do, do the entire um, text not just one item so we're going to try and see if we can uh, do it for one item. So, oh, you can make that. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. So you can make that bold. Uh, you can underline that. And you can overscore that. You can put it to the right, put it to the left, centerize it. And um, you can indent it, which I think is quite interesting. Uh, how do you end it? Oh, okay. So. So there you go, you can indent it. You can even customise the font, which is interesting. So, sans serif. Okay, choose font. So, how... That didn't really change too much. It's just mono, mono space. That's more of a typewriter still font. Choose the font, bold, regular, italic. But there we go. And you can also change the colour. So, I'll mix some colours up. Um, so I'll just choose a pink colour, which seems to work quite well, and a green colour. So there you go, so that's a little uh, writer for you, or a little text document writer. So we'll save that as Ricky's doc, and boom. So that is that for the office category. Uh, we've got other, which is the welcome um, app again. So utilities, settings, text pad, file manager. Can you right click on this? Yes, you can. So you can change the theming as well. So this is the Windows 8 theme I've just selected. This is Windows 8 theme right here. So white uh, menus going on right here right now. We'll open a window and see how that looks. Just on a random window. And there you go, you've got the Windows 8 style um, border going on. You can add a widget to the desktop, a digital clock. Because why not? You can even scale up, I think. Yes. Make it, keep it small. Keep it like that. There we go. So we've got, I've got a little widget on the, on the desktop. So add a standard theme, which is kind of a grey standard dark theme, which I kind of like. It's kind of nice and dark. I am going to keep it on to the Windows 8 style theme for now. Um, select the wallpaper. There's only two, I believe. Um, notice how, notice how, if, if uh, when you're, I'm going to try and see if I can multitask with this. Oh, I see. So the window that isn't running is, notice it, notice it in the taskbar right here, or the uh, task manager, whatever you call it right here. 
um, just like in a normal desktop, uh, every application has got its own button, so you can access it from here. So you can switch between that, and you can also close it in all sorts. So, oh, so that that the icon also had its own menu as well, so we can close, minimize, and maximize. Interesting, it's very well programmed. I'll probably say right here. I can switch between different programs, so you can multitask with this, which is all very good and dandy. Temporary one, that is, oh I see, select the wallpaper, okay, can OSGS, what's this, what the heck is that, I'll go to the home area, which I like, I like that one a little bit better, I don't know about you, but uh, we'll go for that and we'll, just to be on the safe side, we're going to choose a different one, Fabicon, um, not sure how I feel about that. Um, desktop. OS.js. Themes. So, apps. There's even a way to add. I think there's even a way to add apps to this as well, which is quite interesting. It's very intriguing. Um. But yeah, that is the thing for now. We'll go to the settings and see what other settings we can change. So, desktop. I'm not too sure if I like the brick so much, so I'm going to go back and change it to there, that. It's style, cover. What's that? Co cover, contain. What does that do? Repeat. Makes it bigger. Hmm. Color, and you can change the background color. Color. Oh god, that is quite. Sorry, if, sorry if your eyes hurt, but uh, I'll change it. Oh god, that's even worse. Make make it just a little bit light. Eh, uh, not too sure if like purple. I'm gonna go for a darker red. Little bit darker. Oh, oh, actually, I'll make it more of a classic Windows style. There you go! Is that not retro enough? Themes. Gnome icons, you can't change them. Uh, free desktop sounds, you can't change that sadly. Um, desktop. Now desktop icons. Yeah. Why would I have you disable that? Icons disappear. Well how do you add them? That's, that would be an interesting thing. How do you add them? You can't add them, that's quite annoying. Locale, so you can change the language. I don't really need to change, I'm pretty good with English, I suppose. Inverted background color. What does that do? Uh, what is what does that do? What does that do? It hasn't done nothing. Custom system. Not a clue what the heck I'm changing, but you can add some additional uh, theming theming going on so it's got gnome icons which is quite interesting so yeah it's got a little bit of a thing going on with Linux because I, I, I believe this is also open source you can actually look at the um, if I'll take a look at this so we'll go to the welcome window and so they're making a little bit of money so they've got advertising going on which is fair enough I suppose and uh, nothing really much to worry about so you've got the github manual chat community um, so if there's a GitHub area, so I, can, I suppose you can probably download the contents for OS or JS and maybe alter it yourself. So go to file code and download it and maybe mess around with it. So I suppose it's maybe it's got a view license. It's not got an edit license. Hang on, what's? Oh, it's, okay, it's not got a view license. Uh, the license is uh, JavaScript covered. It's a platform copyright 2020. So there you go, so it was created by this person, Anders Evanrod. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name if you're watching this. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. BSD 2 clause license. So it's kind of got a thing based on um, BSD. Um, hmm. Manual. Is it basically the, the OS I'm thinking of? I'm not too sure. So we've got the GitHub, you've got the home page, which is not really just this. There's even a video show, showing, 
showing you how to look. Why has it not got that wallpaper? I'm so sad. Why? Oh, I don't I'm not, I want, I'm so sad. How do you add your own contents to this? That's what I'm wanting to know. Manual. Oh, so it's, um, it's quite a bit of uh, content going on, so, hmm. So see, there, there does seem to be quite a bit of uh, documentation. Um, so how do you add your own contents then? Desktop panel item widget tray. That's a tray. Oh, I see, so basically just like a normal uh, uh, Windows or even just a standard uh, operating system. This thing in the corner right here will change, or the stuff be added if there's something working in the background. Which I think is quite interesting. Is there a task manager on this? I can't actually remember. Utilities text pad. A simple notepad editor. or so. I suppose you could save it as anything as well, so add stuff to the end of that, so meh. And you've got the file manager, which I forgot to take a look at. Oh god, <laughs> that's nice! <laughs> A lot of songs, stupid HTML. <laughs> what? HTML viewer, what is this? Hello, world! Hmm. So it seems to be well documented, and I'm pretty sure it's maybe still in development, I'm not too sure. Kind of sad you can't add your own contents to it, I'm not too sure how that's done, but uh, yeah. Um, theme, users, creation, creation. A theme consists of, of icons, official standard theme, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I the JSON that describes your theme and contains. Also, you have to use uh, the JSON extension uh, to get things to work up. Interesting. Interesting. So, that, that's all well and good. Okay, so that. Sorry about that little bit of a ramble right there. I'm just trying to figure out how, how this thing overall works. Not sure I've got the gist of it, but meh. Um, so it's kind of got a thing similar going on with Solve OS. It's kind of included in its own little bubble. Kind of way it's got programs that are kind of developed into it like they were in Solve OS, the 2020 version that I took a look at quite recently. Um, a lot of custom um, programs as well and even a version of Wolverstein working on this which is very, very intriguing. And then, what does save session logout? What does logout do? It just restarts it. I'm not saving my session, but hee haw, that's just that. Alrighty, so that is OS.js. And I think it's quite a cool uh, concept. Um, it's quite clean and crisp. It seems, it seems, it seems quite um, simple on how, how to use it. It's quite user friendly. If it was a real operating system, I'd probably use it. Um, but sadly, this isn't a real thing. It's uh, running in a web browser. Um, kind of sad though that they've not got additional uh, excuse me icon sets, but they've got a lot of theme sets. But hey, everything you can't have um, everything. You can't have everything, I suppose. Um, you can't have your cake and eat it. And I suppose there's a, a design language they're going with with this whole thing as well. So it's kind of looking a little bit like GNOME or something. And it's a design language kind of thing going on right here. Not too sure what this search button is supposed to do. I'm um, not too sure about that. But, but yeah, uh, that is that is that. So that is OS.js. As I say, thanks for watching, everyone. And I hope you enjoyed and if you want me to see any other projects that you've either created or seen online you want me to check out leave a comment and I will check it out and if you're not subscribed already hit the subscribe button join the channel um, and run the bell to make sure you get notifications of new content and I will appreciate that that being said I hope you enjoyed this and that being said we have a very very rest, good rest of your day and I will talk to you next time bye